Hello, 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 and welcome to our COP Saturday online special. Great to have you with us. We are going to have an awesome time tonight with Pastor Jason Avanzini, and he is currently pastoring our COP Hawaii. And we love him and his wife, Jessica. We're so happy that they are there. We'll get to them in just a little while, but first, let's start with Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say to the Lord, my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust, for he will deliver you from the snare of the fowler and from the deadly pestilence. He will cover you with his pinions and under his wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness is a shield and buckler. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that stalks in darkness, nor the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only look with your eyes and see the recompense of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place, the Most High who is my refuge, No evil shall be allowed to befall you, no plague come near your tent. For he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. On their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against a stone. You will tread on the lion and the adder, the young lion and the serpent you will trample underfoot. Because he holds fast to me in love, I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will rescue him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Amen. Well, we have an announcement about our Saturday online specials. Tonight, we have Pastor Jason And next week, we have a treat because we have Pastor Bong Soriano. And then when it comes to November, the first Saturday in November, you will remember to tune in one hour earlier. Why? Because we will then, starting November, be streaming live our Saturday night service live from the main auditorium. And I know that's what a lot of you have been asking for. And I know you're loving the Saturday night specials, but I also know you will love to have the online streaming from the main auditorium, the main service where Pastor is preaching. So wait for it. Saturday, the first Saturday of November, we will have that. But for tonight, we will be having Pastor Jason preach for us after we worship the Lord together.
All right. Hello, COP. I'm so glad to get to be with you this evening. I believe that God has a special word for you today. I believe that tonight is going to be a changing day or night. It's going to be a changing time in your life. I believe that God wants to bring us out of this season and into the next season of our lives. And I believe it's going to be fruitful. Amen. Would you look with me in your word at Jonah chapter 1, verse 17? It says, And the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish, saying, I called out to you out of my distress, and he answered me. Out of the belly of Sheol I cried, and you heard me. For you cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood surrounded me. All your waves and your billows passed over me. Then I said, I am driven away from your sight, yet I shall look again upon your holy temple. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. Yet you brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remembered the Lord and my prayer came to you in your holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their hope of steadfast love. But I, with a voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will pay, salvation belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the fish, and it vomited Jonah up upon the dry land. Then the word, verse, uh, chapter 3, verse 1, and Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, the great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh. And we'll stop right there. I want to talk about us coming out of stinky situations, much like Jonah came out of his stinky situation. Through the past few months we've been dealing with COVID, the question has been, God, how long are we going to be going through this? And when are we going to come out of this and move into the next season of our lives? What does God look for in the heart of his children when he's deciding that it's time for us to come up and out and into the next season? Well, I'm glad you asked. That's a good question. And the word of God answers this question in part through the story of Jonah. Since I know that we have uh, a lot of people here who like to cook, or certainly we have a lot of people here who like to eat and probably like to cook, I want to give you an illustration from the kitchen, and then we'll get into the fullness of the Word of God. So what I've learned, just I've learned a few things from my mom about cooking. Uh, whenever you're cooking something like pineapple upside down cake or lemon cake, my mom told me that there's not a set amount of time that you leave the cake in the oven for. But a good chef knows how to look and see and they can tell when it's time to pull out that cake at just the right time so that it's not overcooked and it's not undercooked. There's a two or three minute window that you can pull it out and it will be just right. Here's the parallel. God is our author of our lives, the creator of our lives, and the potter of our lives. He's also the chef of our lives. The Bible actually puts it like this. It says he's the potter of our lives. Take a look at Isaiah uh, chapter 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, thou art our father, and we are the clay. And thou art potter, and we all are the work of thine hand. Okay, so this illustration that Isaiah gives about us being clay and him being the potter, it works just as well for the point that I'm trying to make. The point is from time to time, God will allow us to go through the fire and go through difficulty, literally through the oven of life, in order to grow us and develop us so that we can become what we were created to be. Take a look at James chapter 1, verse 2 through 4. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, 
whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. But let perseverance finish its work so that you can be mature and lacking nothing. So God really knows how to perfect us, correct us, and inspect us through every season. Not every season of our lives is going to be roses. Certainly this last season has felt more like we're getting cooked. But our God is a good God and he's a loving father. And he knows exactly when it's time for us to come out. Amen? God can look at the signs. He can read the signs and he can tell when it's time for us to come out. He knows when it's time for you to move into your next season of life. Amen. So... What does God look for? Well, let's consider Jonah for a minute. Let's consider what we just read. How did Jonah get into this mess? The Lord gives Jonah instructions to go to Nineveh. Jonah ignores those instructions, goes the opposite direction to Tarshish. Now, this is a side note, but if you run from God and from his instruction for your life, it will not turn out well because God does not reward disobedience. So Jonah sails off in the opposite direction. He's in a boat, a storm shows up, and it threatens the lives of everyone on board. Jonah eventually confesses. He says, I'm the reason for the storm. So the sailors, aka his momentary friends, they decide to throw him overboard. Jonah is in the water, in the storm, and he is sinking fast. But the Bible says God prepared a fish that swallows Jonah. Jonah is in the stomach of this fish for three days and three nights. And it's not until the Lord says, the Lord gives the command that the fish actually spits out Jonah. So God delivered Jonah from the situation that he put Jonah in, in the belly of the fish. Here's the question. What did God look for in deciding it was time for Jonah to come out? What was the turning point? What changed everything? What happened inside the belly of the fish? I want to examine with you, we'll go quickly, four things that happened. Four things that ignited change in the situation and circumstance of Jonah. Four things that you and I can apply to our lives in order to see us move out of this stinky situation and into the fullness of what God has for us. So I don't think anyone here is running from God. If you are running from God, well, then this message is for you. But even if you're not running from God, if there's any area of your life that you feel like has been uh, trapped and you're ready to come out and see transformation in your life, this message is for you. God wants to bring you out of the oven and see you transformed. He wants to see you go from glory unto glory unto glory into that fullness of the picture of Jesus Christ. So let's see what we can gather today from from Jonah chapter 1, 2, and 3. From the book of Jonah. What happened inside the belly of the fish that brought about transformation? Point number one, prayer. Point number one, prayer. Prayer happened inside the belly of the fish. Jonah started praying. In chapter 1, the Lord gives Jonah instructions, and without praying, Jonah makes a decision to go to Tarshish. He made a radical decision without wrapping it in prayer. Please hear me. When you make decisions without praying about it first, you're setting yourself up for trouble. When you set a course and a direction for your life, Without wrapping it in prayer, it can definitely end up in a bad situation. Now, please don't misunderstand. Not all bad situations are the result of our own decisions. But decisions without prayer will often lead to a bad situation. This is why the Word of God tells us over and over again the importance of praying. Take a look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Are you wondering about what to do with the next thing in your life? Pray about it. 
Colossians 4, 2. Continue steadfastly in prayer. Continue. Always be in prayer. Being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Proverbs chapter 3, verse 6. It says, In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he will make your path straight. Now, the Bible tells us over and over again that God wants us to pray. He wants us to talk to him. And the reason that he wants you to be in prayer is because he knows how much you need prayer. God wants you to experience his best in life. He wants you to trust him, and he wants you to be transformed by prayer. Let me show you something. Let me show you something about how transformational prayer can be. Watch this. Don't forget this. As soon as I saw this, my life took a different direction. I thought, wow, I've never seen this. This is a brand new revelation from the Word of God. Whenever we look at Jonah chapter 1, verse 17, look at this again. It says, Then the Lord appointed a great fish to swallow up Jonah. And Jonah was in the belly of the fish three days and nights. Now catch this. The Bible here uses the word for fish. It uses the word that is the masculine noun. It's a male fish. It's Strong's number H1709. It means a masculine fish. But then look at the very next verse. So this would be Jonah chapter 2 verse 1. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord his God from the belly of the fish. Now, when we read it in English, it's the same exact word. Fish and verse 17. Fish and chapter 2, verse 1. But it's actually not. The Bible here uses a different word for fish. It uses the Hebrew word daga, which is actually the feminine noun. So it's a female fish. This is a different word. This is word Strong's number H1710. So what happened here? Is this a typo? Is this fish changing genders? No, it's not a typo. No, it's not changing genders. I believe it's giving us a great revelation. Now notice this. Whenever Jonah is on the run, the masculine word for fish is used. But when Jonah starts to pray, the feminine word for fish is used. Okay, where are we going with this? The difference is what happens inside the belly of a man in contrast to what happens inside the belly or the womb of a woman. Now, the belly of a man has one primary function, digestion, breaking down whatever is inside. But the belly or the womb of a woman has another primary function, development. This is where life is conceived and a child, a person, is matured, developed, and nurtured. So the difference is, whenever Jonah started to pray, the environment that was designed for breaking something down became the environment that was designed for developing and maturing a person. Did you catch it? With that one word, the entire perspective has changed. From Jonah's end to Jonah's new beginning. With a prayer of faith, the entire perspective changed from definite destruction to a new day. Prayer changes everything. Did you catch it? When he's on the run, he prays, and it uses the word, uh, the male word for fish. When he's on the run, it's the male word for fish. When he starts to pray, it's the female word for fish. I'm sure for Jonah, nothing changed in the atmosphere he was in. But when he began to pray, everything changed. Prayer has the transformational power to see the situation that was designed and intended to break you down. And it can be changed. God can see it used to build you up for all that God has planned and purposed for your life. Not just for your life, but also for the lives of those around you. You know, we just read a few verses about prayer from Paul. You know that over and over again, what we see the most is a command that we should pray for others more than praying for ourselves. 
Did you know that any fervent prayer that we make for someone else's breakthrough actually positions us to receive a breakthrough from the Lord as well? Take a look at this, Ephesians chapter 6, verse 8. Knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall he receive of the Lord. Did you catch that? Any good thing that you cause to happen to someone else, God will cause it to happen to you. I mean, that's again, that's another picture of seed time and harvest. What we're seeing here is if we start to pray for other people and for their breakthrough, and they receive their miracle and they receive their breakthrough, it positions us that the Lord says, whatever good thing you cause to happen to someone else, I will cause it to happen to you. God's going to bring breakthrough into your life. God's going to release the miraculous into your life. So what happened inside the belly of the fish that brought trans transformation? Number one, Jonah prayed. Jonah prayed. In this moment, everything looked the same. But we know that something changed, that it was no longer the environment that was going to destroy him. This was now the environment that God was going to use to make him and develop him into all he needed to be. Okay, point number two. What happened inside the belly of the fish? Praise. So catch this. Jonah is still in the belly of the fish. And paradoxically, he starts to praise God. Look at Jonah 2 verse 9. Jonah 2 verse 9. It says, But I with the voice of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed, I will pay. Salvation belongs to the Lord. Now what seems so strange about this is that Jonah has a voice of thanksgiving after experiencing all of this trouble. He is still locked in the belly of the fish. Now verse 9 would make more sense if it came after verse 10. Because verse 10 is where Jonah is actually released from the belly of the fish, where he is then free from this difficult situation. But catch this. Jonah praises the Lord while he is still in the belly of the fish. That is impressive. Because all of us know how to praise God after we get out of the struggle, after the bills are paid, after we get a good uh, report from the doctor, after things start turning around. But what is really impressive is that if you can praise God, make a joyful noise to the Lord while you're still in the belly of the fish. Can you still praise God when it does not look like things are getting better? When it doesn't look like there's going to be enough? When the doctor's report is still not what it should be? Can you still praise God then? Can you still raise a voice of thanksgiving to God no matter what your situation is? Oh my goodness. That should be our goal. Our gratitude, our thankfulness, our, our praise to God should not be dependent on our surrounding circumstances. Our praise to God should really come from and be initiated from who Jesus is and what he has already done for us. Amen? What has he already done for us by grace through faith? What has he already made available to us? What has he already done? Can we stop and praise God in the middle of this situation that we're in? Folks, we're all going through this COVID time. We're all handling it differently. But what is most important is are we still able to make a joyful noise? What is God looking for? In the middle of this, what are some of those determining factors that decided whether or not Jonah was going to stay in a little longer or come out? Prayer and also praise. Now, every time I read this story about Jonah, I had the purpose of the fish totally wrong. I always assumed that the fish was punishment, that actually the, the, the fish was part of the punishment for him running from God. That's not what the Word of God says. That's not what Jonah says. Jonah actually says that the fish was protection. Take a look at verse, chapter 2, verse 5. The waters closed in over me to take my life. The deep surrounded me. Weeds wrapped around my head at the roots of the mountain. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever. 
yet you brought up my life from the pit. O oh Lord my God, when my life was fainting away, I remember the Lord, and my prayer came to you into your holy temple. Now what are we seeing here? What are we seeing here? We're seeing that it it's not the picture of Jonah uh, falling in or getting thrown overboard, and then as soon as he hits the water, here comes the fish and it swallows Jonah. The picture that Jonah paints is that he is literally sinking to the bottom. That he is that seaweeds have wrapped around his head. That he was about to die. And in that moment, God sent a fish to keep him from dying in disobedience. This is a picture of the grace of God. That even though Job did nothing to deserve being rescue, rescued, God rescued him. <laughs> And rescued him in the most unconventional way. So what Jonah did, that rebellion, it should have killed him. It should have been the end of his life. He was thrown overboard. He was left for dead. But our God is so gracious that he sent protection in the form of a fish. The fish saved him. So the full picture is this. Jonah is giving thanks. Because even though... He was disobedient, even though he was thrown overboard, even though he was left for dead. God spared his life and gave him a second chance. Jonah woke up and he thanked God and repented. The fish wasn't a part of the punishment. The, it, it was protection from destruction. Listen, I don't know where we're all at, what, we're, what our relationship is with God, if we're on the run. If we're not, either way, I think we can all learn from this part of Jonah's story. That what we often think of as a punishment in our lives might actually be protection. I mean, maybe you need to thank God that you did not get that job. Maybe God was protecting you from a career that was not worthy of your gifting. Young people, thank God that that relationship didn't work out. God might have been protecting you from a future marriage that you weren't called to. Thank God that it didn't go your way because God has a bigger picture in mind. Trust God and thank God even when it feels like nothing is going your way. We should be people who praise Him. Praise Him because He's worthy to be praised. Praise Him for He is good. Praise Him because not every perceived setback is a punishment. It might actually be protection. Praise him because praise changes things. Take a look at a scripture here about praise. Psalm 100, chapter 100, verse 4. It says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. Okay, I love this verse because it tells us enter his gates with thanksgiving and enter his courts with praise. Now, what I love about this a lot of us have smartphones, and they have a passcode. We need the passcode to be able to get in. I feel like we're getting a little bit of the passcode here. How do we enter into his courts? How do we enter into his gates? With thanksgiving in our hearts. We, with thanksgiving is what it is that brings us into his gates. So, let's keep going. We'll just go just a little bit further with you. What happened inside the belly of the fish that brought transformation out of the situation. Number one, Jonah prayed to God. Let's be people of prayer. Number two, Jonah praised God even from the belly of the fish. Let's be people of praise. And number three, Jonah pursued his purpose. Jonah pursued what God had given him, the purpose that God had given him. As soon as Jonah was spit up, let's read what he did and. Jonah chapter 3, verse 1. says, Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and call out against it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, a three days journey in breadth. Verse 4, Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey, and he called out. Meaning on the first day that he went out, he started uh, uh, speaking what the Lord had told him to say. 
uh, verse 4. And he called out, Yet forty days and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They called for a fast and put on a sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Okay, so how was Jonah changed? Jonah was changed because as soon as he was released, he starts off right where he left off, with the last instruction that God had given him. See, your next season, your next revelation with God, it will not go beyond your last instruction from God. That's just what it is. I was just talking with, with my grandma, with Sister Pat, about this. And we were talking about how often people will come to church or they'll watch a Christian program and they're looking for a fresh word from God. And that's good. It's always good to come into a time uh, of uh, reading the Word of God and studying the Word of God with someone always be looking for a fresh word of God. But there's something that she was bringing up about, are we people that are ignoring the last instruction that we've received and just looking for something new? You won't go further with God until you pick up right where with the last instruction that God gave you. Don't just say, well, I don't like that instruction, so I'm going to keep on listening. Maybe I'll hear something new I can do. No, if God has spoken an instruction to your life, then you need to, hey, you're not going to move forward until you obediently move in obedience to that instruction. It's great to listen to speakers and to try to get a fresh word from them, but please understand that the word of God is a wellspring of life. His, the word of God is living water. I mean, this is where we need to go and look for a fresh word. If we're only... If we're only getting a fresh word from God twice a week at church, then we are not going to move into the fullness God has for us. We have to continue in the word of God daily. So Jonah got busy about what God asked him to do, and he did it on the first day. Meaning he was quick about it. He went back, the last instruction that God gave him, he said, I'm going to move into that right now. Let me just say this. A lot of us have been given instructions from the Lord. And we have used this uh, time of COVID. It, it has prevented us from maybe being able to be as present as we would like to be in different situations. But if the Lord has called you to speak to someone about the things of the Lord, don't use this COVID as an excuse not to. Instead, pick up the phone. Call those people. It, uh, make contact. If the Lord is telling you to join a church and you haven't been going, because of course there's been a lockdown, join online. Join a go group. Get connected. Remember, your next season won't start until you get serious about following the last instruction that God has given you. Amen? Get excited about what God wants to partner with you in doing. Now, this is great because God partnered with Jonah. And in partnering with Jonah, it brought about the salvation of the entire city for an entire generation. God wants to partner with you in much the same way. God wants to partner with you in order to see this generation here, now, brought to Christ. I mean, this is the Great Commission. Go, therefore, into all the world, making disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe everything I've commanded you. Behold, I am with you always. That is our instruction. And maybe that's the last instruction we heard. That always needs to be the first instruction that we follow. Remember, the Great Commission was not just given for pastors and for leaders. It's for everyone who is following Jesus. I want to highlight one more thing. I want to highlight a commonality that you see all throughout Scripture of God partnering with people. Every time God wants to move in a miraculous way in a generation or in a moment, he will always partner with people. God partnered with Adam, even at creation. God creates everything. God partners with Adam. He says, you name all of the animals. With, with the Israelites, they're, they're enslaved by the Egyptians. God partners with Moses in seeing their deliverance. With Goliath, God partners with David, in order to see uh, Goliath slain. 
Even in the New Testament, we see this. We see whenever Jesus turns the water into wine, he instructs the helpers there to distribute the wine. The miracle took place in their hands. Whenever Jesus fed the 10,000, right, the 5,000 plus women and children, the miracle, God took the five loaves and the two fish, the Lord, he spoke over it, he prayed over it, he gave it to the disciples, the miracle happened in their hands. Even with Lazarus, our Lord partnered with the people that were there. He said, look, you roll away the stone over and over again. And then he says, Lazarus, come forth. Over and over again, we see the Lord partnering with people. And they, it didn't matter what their situation, it didn't matter what possible excuse they could have had. The Lord is looking for people who he can partner with in order to see his kingdom come and his will done on earth as it is in heaven. How does it happen? It happens through us. We are the hands and the feet of Jesus. We are salt and light. We are called the ambassadors of heaven. We are called to be imitators of God. Praise God. Okay, here's this last thing I want to say. Sometimes we'll get so focused on uh, our problems, on the situation that we think for whatever reason we cannot be uh, used by God. We cannot partner with God to do great things. Over and over again in Scripture, we see people that God used, that he partnered with, who could have written themselves off. God partners with Abraham. Abraham could have said, I'm too old. He partnered with Joseph. Joseph was bullied by his whole family. He partners with Jonah, who is, who is fearful and reluctant. He partners with Elijah, who is uh, very emotional. He partnered with David, who in his past had an affair and also had committed murder. He partnered with Martha, who was a worrier. He partnered with Peter, who was impulsive. He partnered with Lazarus, who was dead. He can partner with anyone. So get this excuse out of your mind of, well, I'm just not in a place where God can use me. God wants to use you, regardless of your past. Okay, number four, and I'm done. Number one was what? Number one was Jonah prayed in the belly of the fish, and transformation came. A new season was released. Number two, Jonah praised in the, in the, in the belly of the fish. He praised God, and transformation came. Number three, he got serious and started pursuing his purpose. Now, there is some individual purposes that we have, but there's also some general purposes we have as believers, including that Great Commission. Get serious about that. I believe we're going to see a shift into the next season. And number four, Jonah repented. He changed his mind. Jonah changed his mind about the decisions that he made. He changed his mind about what he was doing wrong. He changed his mind about following the leading of the Lord. He changed his mind about the direction of his life. And for many of us who are watching this, maybe we need to change our mind. You know, the word repent, um, the word repent actually means in the Greek, it's two words, metanoia. And metanoia, it, it's two words. Meta means change, like we have the word uh, metamorphosis. It would be the transformation. Meta means change. And then noia means mind. It like uh, We have words like paranoia. has to do with people's minds. So metanoia, change your mind. We have to maybe change our mind about some of these different areas of our lives. We say, look, God, there's some areas of my life that I, I, that I haven't been following your instructions all the way in. Why don't we just use this time right now to say, God, I want to transfer, I want to change out of this season, but God, more, impo more importantly and most importantly, I want there to be a change in my mind, in my spirit, in my soul. God, I commit to you my ways. Not my way, not my will, but your will be done. Something powerful happens in a place of repentance. I'm not saying that we're in this COVID because of anything that anyone has done. I'm not saying your difficult situation is your fault. What I am saying is that we can learn from each of these four points. That no matter how we ended up in this situation, we can start to pray and we can expect to see change. 
This environment that is designed to break us down, God will use to develop and mature us. It might not be our fault that we're in this situation, but we sure can praise. In this moment, we can praise God. And we can anticipate that our praise is going to change the situation and bring us into something new. In this moment, it might not be our fault that we're in this moment, that things are difficult. But you know what we can do? We can get serious about pursuing the call of God on our life, whatever it might be. First and foremost, we know that we are called to go out and make disciples. Let's get serious about that pursuit, even now, while it seems like we're in the belly of the fish. And what else can we do? We can repent. We can say, God, continue to search me, continue to shape me. Any area of my life that is not in accordance with your word, God, I ask you to show it to me, that I might move forward and move into your perfect plan for my life. All right, I've already gone on a little bit too long. So I'd like to close right now. And I'd like to give us an opportunity. Um, if, if you would like to see a change in your life, I want to I pray with you. And more importantly, if you've never made a personal commitment to follow Christ, I want to give you that opportunity even now. You know, the greatest opportunity that I have in speaking with you is is the opportunity for those who have never made a personal commitment to Jesus Christ. The greatest miracle of all is the salvation of our souls that's made available through Jesus Christ. So right now, what I'd like to do is pray with you. So if you'd please pray with me. If, you've, if, you, have, if you would like to receive Christ, I'd like you to pray with me now. Just repeat after me. Father God, I come to you a sinner. I ask for your mercy. I turn from sin now. I choose to follow you. Wash me with your blood. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I will only serve you I will only follow Jesus. Make it possible for me to walk with you. Glorify your name in me. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I'm so glad to have this time with you. I hope that you're blessed. I pray that no matter what season you're in or what condition you're in right now, I pray that the hand of God will be upon you, that you are safe and protected, that you are healed. And most importantly, I pray that you would draw closer to the Lord. Don't let this uh, wait time of lockdown become wasted time. We believe that God is putting seeds into our lives even now that are going to bear fruit in the coming season. So I just want to thank you. And I want to thank COP for giving me the opportunity to share with you. So God bless you. Hope to see you again soon.